Mendoza, and uh, I live on 312 Ford Street in East Providence, of course. Uh, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you as well for the opportunity to speak. Um, I've been involved pretty much since the beginning, since I went to the EP Planning Board. You might recognize my voice or faces, I'm sure. But um, I just, I have to talk because this is right across the house from my, uh, right across the street from my house. And I lived in this house all my life. My parents, my grandparents grew up in this area and they loved it here and I really loved it here. I remember when I was looking for a house and I spent about a year looking for another place that was just like this, just like it is next to the golf course, and I couldn't find one. And I remember one day my mom looks at me and she's like, Derek, you know, I think that when you move out, I'm going to sell the house. And I was like, what? Why don't you just sell it to me? Her response was, you want this piece of crap? And I was like, yeah, I do. I, I, I love the area. I've owned the house now for five years, and I've invested more time and money than I will ever ever get back. But it's because I love this, this area. Even if I don't have access to the green space, it just means a lot to have that nearby. And I can tell that all my neighbors feel the same way, especially with all this time I'm working from home now. And I see 15 minutes don't go by in my day where I don't see a family, someone with their dog, or someone jogging, or a bike, just riding down the street next to the golf course because it's just pleasing to be next to you, even if you can't access it. Now, all that said, I'm not opposed to, I understand that it's a golf course and it's been that way for a long time and it might not be profitable and you might have to look at other solutions, <laughs> but I have, I guess, three main concerns that I really, I really have here. And one is, it's been repeated, is that any rezoning that we do is a permanent loss of green space that we will forever be signing over. Because Rezoning like this is a one-way street. They never clear an old abandoned house or development or property and turn it into a park. That just almost never happens. So every anchor that we sign away is permanent. And so I really ask that we spend time considering that in particular. As well as the fact that this area of the Medicom Golf Course is pretty high elevation. I can see the flag somewhere in the middle of the golf course, in the middle of the golf port, uh, course, from South Broadway, from Lyon Avenue, from Warren Avenue, and that might be two or three stories high. I can see it for miles, depending on where I am, Veterans Memorial Parkway. If we have five or six stories buildings in this golf course, you're going to see that instead from even further distances. And that just really breaks my heart, especially when you have such a nice view that all of that side of the community has of the bay and of the golf course, and it would be obstructed by very tall buildings. Now, that said, I, was that my time? Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll just wrap up. Um, that said, I do think that there could be a way forward, but I think that there's more opportunity to push back on the behalf of the community here. I think zone A, B, and C can remain green, and I think that we can limit the height to two three stories max, and I think that there's more than enough room there for the developer to make profit. Kettle Point was $3.5, uh, $3 million purchase for 47 anchors, and they turned that into $31 million worth of value. They have 60 anchors. They have more than enough room to make a profit with us pushing back a little bit further. Thank, Thank you for your time.